welcome. It's nice to meet you online, but I'm sure soon we'll meet in person. Yeah, it's great to meet you too, man. I'd love to go up to your ranch and see your place. Well, it's not really a ranch. <laughs> it's very interesting because I used to have a ranch and it was scaled down to one eighth of a hectare. Believe it or not, it is plenty. Land is not a problem over here at all. We have two hectares, it's five hours drive. <laughs> so how did you get to Russia? Yeah. What, what made you come over? You know, I was born in 1974 in the United States. I never thought I would go to Russia, ever, ever, ever. I thought that was the bad guy place. Um, but I fell in love with a Russian woman and I married her. And so that changed everything for me. Um, so that's that's the short story. Um, and, but it's a, it was an incredible journey for me just to go through this change of mind, like a character in a movie where you think you know who the bad guys are, you know who the good guys are. And as time goes by, you're like, wait a second, I was completely wrong. It's interesting because in, in the 90s or even before, we were always praying onto America. The socialism had a lot of its benefits, but some of the uh, drawbacks were that uh, the individual was not respected at all. There was no individual. Everything is for collectivism together. So as the system tried to ignore the individual, the individual became you know suppressed and not expressing our, our true potential. I remember, you know, when the first can of Coca-Cola came in about 1992, I washed that thing for two months with soap and I was praying onto this can. It was the first chewing gums, they were sold for one ruble at the time. My mom's salary was 120 rubles. <laughs> and one ruble was a chewing gum that came from some of the sailors came over and brought it through. Yeah, it was quite amazing. A lot of Russians will think that it's the American government that broke us, and they had a big role to play. But I think because people weren't expressing themselves, the individual wasn't respected. It was like uh, we wanted to be broken. We wanted 12 million people immigrated uh, between 1990 and 1994. Uh, my family was one of them. I have quite an interesting um, thought, uh, like a brainstorming with you that we can think together. If Anglo-Saxon Empire, okay, would succeed at destroying Russian ethnos, and I mean not just Slav Slav Slavic, I'm talking about the Irkutsk, the the Korean that live close to that side of Vladivostok, the entire Russian ethnos with our entire culture, and there were no more Russian people. If the Anglo-Saxon Empire would succeed, what do you believe the world would lose? Yeah, I mean, that's a deep question. I, I think that that would be really bad be for the world, because then you would have probably no choice to live outside of, well, I'll just call it the American yeah. Empire. I don't know why they don't call it the American Empire. I think because it doesn't sound politically correct. That's basically what it is. America and and the other English speaking countries that they've collected to, you know, to serve them basically. And um, you know, yeah, I think about that a lot because especially as I'm doing my YouTube channel and I'm being invited to speak, you know, for Russian Parliament and go on different news programs. I think. Well, what if the worst case scenario happened and Russia just completely lost and was broken up into pieces and, and you had UN trucks and workers, you know, going through the place and just dividing everything up? Um, you know, that, that would be terrible you know, where we would have to accept, you know, all, everything that the American empire says you have to accept. And I'm not saying that everything the American empire says is necessarily wrong, but I like the freedom to choose and to move somewhere else and to move outside of it if I want to. And on top of that, you know, as I'm successful and my profile grows, I, I also wonder that would probably be bad for me, you know, and anyone who's been um, politically active or pseudo politically active for Russia, <laughs> as far as, uh, you know, trials and whatnot, that would come because they would have to say Russia is the bad guy. I mean, they're already saying Russia is the bad guy. You know, they're shouting it loudly and it's, it doesn't appear to be working because I think because of the internet, and because of um, information being easily distributed now and, and outside of the reach of like the major networks, 
they can't contain it. They cannot lie like they could in the past, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting that it's one thing that, uh, you know, American would stand up for America, you know, because, you know, you felt like that's your brothers and your brotherhood. But an American, uh, you know, you're representative of the, that empire standing up for uh, Russia. What, uh, what made you, you know, make that choice? That's quite a big one. I think, you know, we all identify with different groups. And we feel a kinship to different groups, you know, whether it be an English speaker or if you're a man, another man, or if you're a white guy, maybe another white guy. Um, you know, I could go on and on. I mean, I, I hear your accent. I see your face. And I automatically, and I, I'm living in Russia where I don't hear English that much. And I automatically think, oh, it, it's, it's an Anglo-Saxon. It's one of my brothers. You know, even if genetically you're not Anglo-Saxon, you were raised in that culture. Um, and I think, you know, for me, it was important to be an American. I still love America for its history and for what, it, what it's supposed to be. Um, but I became a Christian over 20 years ago. And for probably the main, the most important um, kinship group that I have so you know, if I if I see an American, that's great. But if I see an, uh, a guy from Africa uh, who's who's a Christian, even if they don't look like me, I'm feeling like, oh, you're my brother. You're my real brother. I mean, the American that's a cool guy too. But you really you understand the same spirituality that I understand. And so I see right now the world, you know, really changing, you know, seismically, like like political earthquakes and and it's a dangerous place right now for everybody and you know i feel more drawn to you know my christian brothers and what i see is you know russia is a place for traditional family values i would say and that is a good place for people like myself who like to be christian and who want, want to raise kids, kids. <laughs> exactly without exactly. the BS. Kids. exactly I mean, you don't have to be Christian, but I would say traditional family values is a good way to describe it, you know, for for those who necessarily are not religious. And, you know, there's a lot of people in the West, you know, um, or, or even just in the English speaking countries like the one you came from that are for traditional family values and would love to live in a place like this. But they just literally don't know that it exists because the news lies to them. And, you know, when I started the channel, my hope was that, you know, people would see it and they would say, oh, man, that Russia is a cool place. And they would pressure their governments at a high level to lay off of Russia. That hasn't happened. I don't know if it's going to happen at this point. But what is happening is, is people are asking us, how do we immigrate? How do we immigrate? Um, and so, yeah, I feel like whatever small part I can play in this world to help people. You know, I would love it if 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 a couple of families moved to Russia because they heard from my channel Russia was a good place and they got to raise their kids in a safe place. I and mean, what just makes me sick is kids that are living in an environment without traditional family values and they're just being completely confused. Altering the children's <laughs> mind in the wrong at the wrong time of their age, if the wrong time of their development with information that the children shouldn't be seeing. I mean, I've just seen in California and transfer style spanking a mayor, literally spanking him in front of kids. I yeah. it was on Health Ranger, Mike Adams, I'm sure you know him, uh, Brighton. Um, yeah, he just showed it yesterday. It was like, oh my God, I mean, can it get any more sick than that, you know? Fine, yeah. you know, I also have some gay friends and uh, although it's questionable, these gay friends constantly try to get into my pants. Interesting that you speak about Christianity. I'm, I was always like, um, I was brought up a Christian, but I was never like into the whole thing. But now that I came back to Russia, really, I walk past a beautiful uh, church, um, not, uh, not a beautiful, any church. And I walk in and I light a candle. I drop a tear for my father, or, you know, my ancestors who passed away. We have a tradition to light candles for them. I, I, I will say a prayer with my wife. At the time when the world is falling apart, you really like 
okay, we, we have that connection with God. You know, I always thought nature and, you know, called it other names, but the, you know, ultimately, you know, we can speak to our, our creator. The traditional values that they are promoting are amazing. Treat others like you want to be treated, you know. Only now at the age of 42, um, I was speaking to you yesterday about it. I eat with my workers. And I give them mm -hmm. the same food as I eat. The same, my wife cooks three equal same containers and we all share um, the same food. And that's that's from the Bible. So I'm definitely there and resonating with what you're saying and what with what our religion is saying. I, I don't like the whole, we were born in sin part because that, that I believe comes from a bit of guilt. But, you know, so I take some things and I leave some things and, but ultimately you, and I believe what Russia is fighting for right now um, is for God. I'm sorry right. to say it so boldly, but um, it really is. God did not design uh, what we're seeing in the West right now. So uh, Russia is truly fighting for those traditional values for man and woman having a family. Like just say it bl bl bluntly and blatantly like, like that. Well, let me say, Alosha, I mean, uh, as far as uh, Christianity, I think we all have times in our lives where people in the name of Christianity have done us wrong and have made us feel guilty or pressured us in the wrong way and didn't sit well. Um, and I, I, I totally hear what you're saying. I, I agree. You know, we, we can have a guilt pressed on us that is unhealthy and ends up pushing us away from God and the whole religious experience, which is a shame because as you're starting to see, and when you go to go into churches now uh, of your own free will, because you feel no pressure to do so, it's because you want to, there's, there's a power there and there's something special about it. And, you know, sin I, I learned in the past five years is an archery term, which is to miss the mark. So, you know, when we were kids and we're, when we're raised with Christian guilt, it's like, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner. It's this big evil thing. And I don't want to diminish sin, but, you know, from an archery standpoint, it just means to miss the mark. So, you know, I, I think it can be much healthier as an adult, if you're going through your life to recognize, okay, there I sinned, here I didn't sin. I want to try to get better. I want to be a better person. I want to sin less. Yes, I'm going to sin every day. You know, if I do sin, it could be bad. The consequences could be bad, but it's not necessarily the end of the world. I don't need to feel super guilty. I want to decide to sin less and, and move on. As long as you have ways to work on the methods on how to sin less. What I would like to ask you is um, if Russians would finally realize their value in the world and realize that we're not some low frequency scumbags as we're made out uh, and as we believe as a nation we, as i said when the can of coca-cola came it was literally the lord for me you know uh, but um if russian people would eventually like stand strong on their feet and realize we have a place we're we're we're, we're different sure we don't have those fancy things or whatever but we have other things we have gardens we have organic vegetables I mean, almost like 85% of Russia grows their food. I'm sure you're aware with the Dutchess, like everybody's growing food. <laughs> so um, if finally Russian people would realize, okay, we know who we are and we are proud of who we are. If Russia was like that, and how would you see the future then if you know Russia would really, as a nation, step step forth and stop hiding in the background just step forth and say you know claim our place in the world and say this is who we are we want to be there we have a right to be here <laughs> and how would that affect the world if uh, anglo-saxon would not succeed in destroying us and but russia would become a strong power but with its traditional values and beliefs what you but, describe sounds nice i think it sounds great um i think that you know, Hollywood is probably much to blame for Russians feeling like America is awesome, so great, you know, but I think as Hollywood crumbles and as the West has trouble, I think it will change. And I even see in the comments, because I have like 50% Russian subscribers, you know, Russians that are, are sick of this idea, you know, that the West or America is the, the shining city on the hill. You know, I mean, I think they were, you know, in a sense, and it'd be nice if, if they still were, but they're not. 
And I think Russia, you know, is a great place with great people and, and, you know, and it has religion as well. You know, Russia has the same foundation that the West has, the, the deep foundation of stuff that we're brought up on as kids. So these places are the same. And if, and I don't want America to suffer, but if America went through a, a bit of a financial collapse, and instead of being the world power was just a world power, could also be of equal power. I think it could be a real blessing to the world. From what I understand, people that are sincere and in power in America, I guess the idea is the world got really dangerous in the 1940s, and now we are in power. And what whatever happens, even if we have to be a little bit bad, we're not going to take a chance of losing that power. Is the idea, you know? Mm. I believe after after the World War II, America coined about eighty percent of all the world's gold. Yeah, I mean, I think America was on the other side of the globe, right? So they weren't as damaged. So it was very easy for them to come in and say, "Hey, we'll pick up the pieces here, guys," but you got to pay us. As you said, nobody knows that a, a place like this exists where um, you can walk at any time of the day and night, where you're constantly seeing a man and a woman holding hands together. Yeah, I mean, if you haven't if you haven't been here, guys, if you're watching this video, you've never been to Russia. I mean, you just you cannot believe what it really is like. I mean, you cannot believe it. I mean, I I grew up in America and I went to New York City a lot. I, I went to the university there, and I just assumed because it's a big city, it's going to have crime and there's nothing you can do about it because you got so many people living on top of each other. But this is not the case. There is a country where it's nice, seemingly nice everywhere. I mean, I don't see a problem. And, you know, to walk in a park at night, you know, growing up in the U.S., you're just not going to do that, especially in the last 20 years. I mean, you're, you're going you're, you're gonna to have to be careful and assume that you might get mugged or killed or worse. In Russia, that is not the case. You can walk in a park, you know, any time of day. Your wife could even do it by herself if she had to. Um, and it's just, it's crazy. My son left his jacket in the park playing one day. The next morning I was jogging and someone had folded it up and left it on a bench. You know, one time I was eating at a restaurant out, outdoors on their veranda, connected to a shopping mall. I was in shorts, it was summertime here in Moscow. My passport and my wallet fell out of my shorts. I did not know this. You know, went home, woke up the next day, we're like in panic. I'm an American, I don't have my passport, I don't have my wallet with cash, with credit cards, everything. We go searching our neighborhood, asking different places. We finally asked the mall security, and you know they 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 look kind of cross with me because they can't just go giving away stuff. They have to be careful. And they were like, "Was it an American passport?" And he's like, "Yeah." And <laughs> and then they made me wait, and they went into this back room, and they came out, and they gave me my stuff. Had all of it, all of it. Um, and from what I understand, it it is a Russian thing that 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 you're raised with as a child. This idea of don't steal. If you steal, that's going to be very very bad. Like bad things are going to happen to you if you steal. And it's just culturally, you know, I, th I think a benefit in that regard. So it's, it's just an amazing place. And, I, and the Western media doesn't allow you to know that it exists. Yeah, currently a lot of uh, our, our Russia today has been blocked in many countries. Um, I think Telegram is one of the ways that information is still getting through. If Russians were revived, but with honor, how would that impact the world? Yeah, I just, I think that we'd see more prosperity if we had you know, competition of, let's say, strong, productive, hardworking nations, you know, and uh, and not one nation holding all the other nations down, you know, and even, even starting uh, proxy difficulties, let's say, around the world, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. that would be, that would be much better. And I mean, I grew up in a city that's 50% black, and I was born in 1974, and I remember the 80s, you know, my childhood, you know, I, I had, well, my whole life, I had a lot of Black friends, and and I didn't even know about racism, to be honest. You know, it was just a very multicultural city, uh, well, multiracial, I would say, not multicultural, um, you know, 
so multicultural is like different belief systems mixed into the city. You know, we were all still like, um, quote, historically Christian, whether we were black or white. Um, and there were some Hispanic people there too. And it wasn't until um, we started getting into the late 90s where I'm like, I'm becoming an adult, so I'm learning there was racism. And then I'm told more there is racism, there is racism. And it seems like racism, for me anyway, for my city and growing up, got worse um, as I became an adult. Because when I was born as a kid, I, I didn't see it. Now, maybe my parents hid, hid it from me. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, man. It, it's, it's strange because I think it's perhaps used now as a political tool. And that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It doesn't mean it's not a problem. But I think it's an idea that is now exploited for control, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And it's a dangerous game because it's a quick win for the politicians, but uh, uh, the, the ripple effect is obviously much longer that, that hatred is generated. Because you could, you could throw things into media and people start believing it, as strange as it sounds. And what are some of the things that you've noticed that are different to America? Because I gave you a whole list of about 15 things yesterday. Yeah, definitely, guys. This guy is on my channel. So when you're done watching this video, jump over to my channel and you can see him there. And I'm going to interview him. He's going to share what he thinks. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd love to, to talk some about the differences. And also, before I forget, I don't want to forget, you know, I said on my channel when I was with you, I told my subscribers I would share a story that I hadn't shared before on my channel. Mm -hmm. And... And here it is. You you had mentioned that your family um, may have fled Russia when you were um, a teenager because of mafia issues, right? Um, and I know some about my family backstory that, like I said, that I haven't shared before. Is my on my father's side when he was like two, uh, his father was living in New York City with his wife. His wife was a singer. This was like in the 20s and he was a piano player. So it was like great Gatsby times and they were performing live at, at New York events and they were, you know, the entertainment. And apparently the story goes is that it appears that uh, my grandfather, my father's father was also working with mobster guys and he was a heavy like someone who would be sent to hurt people if need be. It looks like, you know, because he was doing mob stuff uh, for his life, he snuck away, ran off to Florida and took his family with him. So much so that, you know, my dad, who was raised by these people in Florida, he was just constantly told, oh, New York's terrible, New York's terrible, it's a scary place. You don't ever want to go there, ever. Um, and, and even as an adult, when he later went with me as a tourist, yeah, it was hard for him emotionally, yeah, because it had been drilled into his head, don't go there. Um, yeah. And it looks like because the family literally couldn't go there because they would probably be killed by somebody. There are differences that don't matter. The, they're small, they're superficial. There are deep differences that really matter. Let, let, let's go for the really... The deep stuff? Okay. Yeah. Um, so the deep stuff, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be quick because I've shared this before. I don't want to bore my people. But I think that... Um, Russians prioritize honesty over friendliness. And I think Americans prioritize friendliness over honesty. And mm -hmm. you see this in the conversations and when you meet people on the street. And if you are a Westerner that comes to Russia as a tourist, you will be a little bit offended how people interact with you because you're expecting a smile and a friendly attitude and you will not get it. Um, because the Russians aren't going to give that to you if they don't know you and they don't have a reason to give it to you. They're just going to be very bland and perhaps a little bit rude to you. If they get to know you, they'll they'll have a real deep friendship with you. But if they don't know you, they're not going to give you a fake smile. You know, and, and if you're a Russian and you go to the U.S., you might be like, why are all these idiots smiling at me everywhere I go? I'm not down on America for this. Both these things are good. It is good to be trained to be friendly. And it is good to be honest. And I, I just think that 
in the US, the, the priority is to be friendly first, which means honesty is going to have to come second. Something's going to be first and something's going to be second. And in Russia, I think it's honesty is the priority. And then being it's like, friendly it's with It's like you don't have that layer of mask, that, that, that superficial smile. You're one mask down. So you're actually seeing the person's true true emotions at that current moment. So if they're feeling yeah. like terrible, they, they're not going to smile like the shop attendant. In America, yeah. they'll get fired if they don't smile as a shop yeah. attendant. Oh, and yeah. The, oh, yeah. In South Africa, I kept on walking and you so, say hello to everybody on the morning jog. You know, hi, uh, hi, how are you? You know, um, yeah, like I started doing that and people look at me for, like weird. Dude, like, do I know you? Why are you saying hello? And why are you waving? And, and that's actually, I like it that way because you don't feel obliged to like look at somebody or say something. You just, if you don't feel like it, you, you, you don't say anything. Just walk and nobody... There's no have to or need to. And that's what I really like. It is more honest. Yeah, I think that it is better. I like it now. Um, maybe in three years, I won't like it. I know that my wife, after about three years of living in America, she she wanted to go back to Russia. So I've only been here a year and a half. We'll see if I change my mind. <laughs> I don't think you will. <laughs> $2,000 dollars um, with a hectare of land and a home and a well with fresh drinking water uh, and a bond <laughs> it was a thousand seven hundred dollars for the whole lot um it's unbelievable the property price so, it's amazing amazing that yeah. was the and if you're a, an american that is going to move here you if you're smart you could you could kick yourself off really well because of the the exchange rates you know so yeah, and so many niches are opened up now that we have uh, due, due to sanctions. A lot of uh, products have left our country, a lot of brands. And obviously, there's a huge void for some things like IT specialists. They're like, <laughs> Russia is like welcoming them, IT specialists. Yeah. I would love to invite people to come. Uh, we actually want to do property development, permaculture, food forest villages with five or 10 home developments, a natural pool food forest garden, you know, composting pile and all of that, but very well, well, well designed and thought through with one road and kids playground. So uh, if anybody is interested, please uh, contact us. We would love to get the first village going in 2024. Nice. Yeah, there, there's a lot of, a lot of people that are starting new villages now and the infrastructure is there. I mean, Russia is building like crazy and repairing roads and fixing things up there's lots of nice towns and villages and cities that i'm seeing now and from what i understand from my comments on my channel in the 90s russia was not like this you know no. and even russians that left they hear about it they, they can't believe how much things have improved so quickly in this country I really believe that if, you know, people watch my channel, even even silly things like seeing my happy children here, they're not going to want a Cold War. You know, I, I don't want a Cold War. You know, I want it to end and I want to do my part and um, come on over to my channel, guys, and watch this guy because I know you like him and uh, leave a comment and let me know what else you think. And let's all, you know, work together. You and I are doing, we're on this, a similar mission. And, um, you know, you viewers really help us out with your likes and comments and subscribing and, and you're, you're doing your part to help this world be a safer place, you know, whether you're a fan of Russia or America or South Africa, we just want to get the information out there and, and help make things better in general. Thanks, Joseph. Thank you guys for watching us.